Hey everyone, it's Brittany and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I've been dying to talk to you about Vampire Academy. So this is a series that I read back when I was a teenager. I think I mentioned it a little bit in my last video because I was talking about the spin-off series after Vampire Academy. And I really want to dedicate a whole video talking about this series. So there are six books in the series. Today I'm going to talk to you about the first two, which is Vampire Academy and Frostbite. I feel like I'm only going to do two in this video because there's so much detail and I love it so much and I get so passionate and if I talk about all six books in one video, it's going to be like an hour long. So I'm just going to talk about these two today and I'm really excited. So I hope you are ready to hear me ramble on about how much I love these <laughs> these vampire books. So the first book I read all the way back when I was in year seven, I was super hesitant because all of my friends were reading it and I was a little bit, I was really skeptical because, and I'm still kind of this way, like when there's so much hype around a book, I don't want to read it because I just feel like I'm going to be disappointed. And so usually what I'll do is I'll read it like years after or whatever. But at the time, all my friends were reading it and they were like, you have to read it. It's the best. And I was like, I don't know like I don't know if it is I don't really want to read it and then be disappointed anyway somehow I ended up buying it I remember this was how long ago it was that I read these books I got this book from Woolworths like Woolies do you guys remember when you used to be able to buy books from Woolies because I do and I got this one from the local Woolies down the street um that's how long ago it was that I read it <laughs> and I remember the same thing happening I same thing happening to me this year. So like I started it and I just could not put it down. Similarly, this year I picked it up and I didn't want to actually, I didn't want to read it because I have such a special place in my heart for these books. And I was like, what if they're not as good as I remember? You know, like what if I read them and I'm like, these are shit. These are trash. As an adult, I hate these. So I was so nervous and I was just never doing it. Like I never, never picked them up as an adult. I only ever read them when I was a teenager. And I went through a bit of a rough patch a couple weeks ago where I was just a bit sad for a little while and I was like, you know what would really cheer me up? <laughs> Vampire Academy. So I was like, you know what? I think now's the time that I reread Vampire Academy. And I got home from work and I pulled it out of my bookshelf and I started reading it and I could not stop. It was so good. I smashed it out in less than 24 hours. And I had work both days. So I started at the, in the evening and I was finished it by the time I got home from work the next day. It was so good. And it wasn't just good. It was better than I expected. Like, how rare is that? that like, I had... Okay, maybe it's because I had low expectations. So I was thinking, you know what? I loved these books when I was 12 and, like, 13. Maybe... Like, maybe they will be, tr like, trash, but it's okay. I'm just going to give it a go. And then I read it, and it surpassed every expectation I had. And maybe that's why I'm really happy now. And, like, maybe that's why I love it so much now. Because I did expect it to not be good. I did expect to have some reservations about it. And it's perfect. <laughs> it's it's so much better than what I prepared myself for, which is the best. Because then I've enjoyed it even more. Like, I'm even happier when I'm reading it. I should probably tell you a little bit about what happens in Vampire Academy. I don't want to spoil it, just in case, even though it's so old, just in case any of you guys want to read it after watching this video, I'm not going to spoil it for you. But basically the plot line is, it's these two best friends. One is Rose Hathaway and the other is Lissa Dragomir. Lissa is a vampire, but she's a good vampire. And Rose is her guardian to protect her from all the bad vampires. So there's the good vampires and the bad vampires. And Rose is kind of an in-between. She's not a vampire, but she's not human either. Um, basically, what happens is Lissa is the last princess in her line. <laughs> Even saying it, I'm like, oh man, this is kind of embarrassing that I love these books so much. But at the same time, you know what? I don't care. This is what you came for. So cool. And they are both 17 and they escaped from Vampire Academy, which is, it's not actually called Vampire Academy. It's called St. Vladimir's Academy. And they escape for a couple of years because someone is hunting Lissa and Rose takes her away to protect her. Anyway, one night they're out, like, well, they're not out, they're at their house. And Rose is a guardian. So she's been trained to have like super reflexes. She's super strong. She's the... Oh, she is the best. She's such a badass and like the best fighter. 
and one night she like sends to someone out the window and she's freaking out and she's like Lissa we need to go I feel like the academy has tracked us down and they're trying to bring us back so they bolt it is the academy and they have tracked them down and they capture them and take them back to the school and basically the first book is about them being back at the academy and Rose is so out of shape compared to all the other novices in her grade everyone's like super advanced because she's missed out on two years of schooling and at the school she's learning how to be a fighter amongst like all the other basic classes in high school and basically what happens is throughout the book all these weird things keep happening to Lissa that they don't know who's doing these things to so people are leaving like dead animals in her room or like half dead animals in her room and like giving her notes and stuff and just being really shady and like it's messing with Lissa and it's probably worth noting as well did I say Nessa or Lissa? Whew. This is not good for me to be reading the Twilight series and Vampire Academy at the same time. I'm getting confused. Um, basically, Lissa's family, so her brother and both her parents, passed away in a car accident right before Rose and Lissa ran away. So right before they left, um, their, her family was killed in a car crash that Rose and Lissa were also in, but they both survived. And basically what happens is uh she is not doing well so obviously her family's gone she only has rose she's the last princess in her line someone is hunting her down things are not going well for her like it's it's a rough time for lissa dragomir and basically it's all about like they're trying to figure out who's hunting her down at the same time as like catching back up in school and this is like girl called mia who's a real bitch to them and kind of like bullies them and spreads rumors about them and i don't want to give too much detail away but it is so good i'm not gonna talk about the movie though so there is a movie of vampire academy do not watch it it gets every single thing in the book wrong they mention in the book like rose talks about how as a novice she's never allowed to hold a silver stake which is the only way one of the only ways to kill an evil vampire so you can like cut their head off set them on fire or kill them with a silver stake on the movie poster, Rose is holding a silver stake. Like, before I even saw the movie, I was like, are they, are they messing around with us? Like, anyone who has read the book, she mentions like three times in this book that she never gets to hold a silver stake and how much she wants to hold it so that she can practice with it. And then they put on the movie poster, her holding a silver stake. And that's not the only thing. They got Dimitri all wrong. So Dimitri is, oh my God. Dimitri he is the person who like captured them and took them back to the school and he's a couple years older than Rose and he's not her teacher but he's a really well regarded guardian in the society like in vampire society he's super well known he's super successful he's super badass super lethal he has killed so many evil vampires and they have tattoos on the back of their neck to show how many vampires they've killed like evil vampires and he's got heaps and everyone's super impressed with him and he's super hot i need to add that in he is they def they like describe him as a god not only because he's like super badass i could kill anyone but because he's beautiful he's so hot anyway there's like a little bit of chemistry between rose and dimitri which we love we love to see it and oh my god dimitri i can't even talk anymore because i'm just thinking about dimitri now and I've lost my train of thought. Cool. Okay, so what I was saying before is that they got Dimitri all wrong. In the movie, he looks like he's 40. He's only supposed to be 24, which I know because Rose is 17 and he's 24. That is the only thing that I'm a bit like, oh, that makes me feel a bit weird. Like, she's a minor. They don't do anything. Okay, well, they kiss. But that's it. It's still not good. But I have to turn a blind eye. I know that it's problematic, but I'm turning a blind eye because I love the series. And as long as we can see that it's problematic and acknowledge that it's problematic, we can still enjoy the art. I think. Oh, I'm probably going to hate myself. I'm probably going to watch this in like threes and be like, bitch, no. Anyway, he looks like he's 40 in the movie. And also they talk about how like he's buff but he's lean. They talk, they describe him so much. He's lean, lean. And in the movie, he's jacked. Like, what is happening? He's jacked and he's at 40. And I'm like, no, he's supposed to be 24. Like, and lean. And like, you know, I just, 
that annoyed me. That was one of the things that annoyed me most. Another thing I didn't like about the movie. Oh my god, I feel like we're not talking about the movie, and now I'm talking about the movie. They got ro I look. No, no disrespect. Props to Zoe Deutsch. She did like a good job of, you know, personifying personifying Rose. I don't even know what the word is. Portraying Rose. I just don't think she was the right fit for her. Because they talk about like Rose is supposed to be one, curvy, two, pretty strong, and three, she's also she's got a bit of a reputation for being a bit chaotic. Like she is always getting suspended. She's like a bit of a mess around. And I just think like with Zoe, she was beautiful and everything, and she did a good job, and she's a great actress, but she's not curvy and she's not strong, and it's just not how I imagined Rose. So I don't know if maybe that's why like I'm a little bit disappointed because in my head I don't see her I don't see Rose the way that Zoe looks. So I don't know. But again, that's just it I don't want to talk about the movie. It's depressing. Let's talk about the book. That's why we're here. Um so oh man, I just I love it so much. Basically at the end, I'm not gonna tell you any spoilers. Andre, I know he will kill me if I say any spoilers. But you find out who has been like hunting Lissa. And that's what I'm gonna say. You do find out, but then it just gets crazy from there. And then that leads me on to Frostbite, which introduces one of my favorite characters of the whole series, Adrian Avashkov. Oh my god. I love Adrian. And in my head, the way I see Adrian, I see him as Machine Gun Kelly, which makes no sense because I'm pretty sure he's supposed to have dark hair. Machine Gun Kelly's blonde. But they're both really tall and, like, they're both really skinny. And they're both, like, smoke a lot and drink a lot. And I just see Adrian with tattoos. Even though I don't think he does, I see him with tattoos. And he's, he's like, so... He's a bad boy. Like, that's probably the best way to describe him. Like, he's just... He's got a really bad reputation of, like, seducing a lot of women and, like drinking a lot and being a party boy and like not working anyway and I kind of associate that with Machine Gun Kelly as well so in my head every time like I'm reading about Adrian I'm thinking of Machine Gun Kelly which is great because I love Machine Gun Kelly but it's probably not an accurate description because Adrian doesn't have tattoos and he's not blonde but you know whatever that's just what my imagination does so we'll just go with it so in Frostbite it start it's winter so basically it's i also kind of i love this book as well because it kind of feels like a christmas book which like you know how tv shows always have like a christmas episode once a season or whatever they don't mention christmas oh no they do it's over christmas break up oh, <laughs> yeah it's over christmas break that's why it feels like a christmas book love that. okay so in this book um, there have been a few attacks near the school from the evil vampires. And so it's a boarding school as well. So like all the parents of like the rich vampire kids, um, and even like the not rich vampire kids, like pull the kids out of the school for Christmas. And they like either go on holiday somewhere far away or they stay home. But they just like a lot of them take the kids out because they're nervous that there have been like evil vampire attacks around the school. And so basically what happens is the school decides to just keep the remaining students, they'll take them on like a ski trip to this like vampire ski lodge that's like really protected with heaps of charms and stuff. I forgot to tell you something super important. This is the most important part. I didn't even mention it when I was talking about Vampire Academy. So every vampire specializes in an element. So like earth, air, fire or water. And Lissa never specialized. And everyone thinks like it's not it's not common for people to not specialize and everyone kind of treats Lissa a little bit differently because she never specialized and basically it's not a spoiler it's necess it's like nece it's necessary for me to tell you because it impacts the rest of the series basically Lissa specialized in spirit and no one specializes in spirit it's so rare that people don't even know that it's an element to specialize in anymore Anyway, Lissa specialized in spirit. Okay, so they all go on this like ski lodge holiday and that's where Rose meets Adrian and he's like super flirty with her, but she's not interested because she's like head over heels in love with Dimitri. But obviously they can't be together because so many other reasons. I can't like to get into them. There's so many reasons why they can't be together. The age thing is one. Also, he's like her tutor 
third of all oh my god i said i wasn't gonna get into them and then i started talking about it anyway in this book as well um lissa is finally dating christian he's another royal vampire who has a really bad reputation because his parents willingly turned into evil vampires i should probably stop there's like actual words for it but i don't want to say it and then it gets too confusing so i'm just gonna call them the evil and the good anyway and he's they've since been killed but he's got a really bad reputation like his family name have a really bad reputation because his parents willingly did that even though he's like good anyway lissa starts dating him and so in this book they're together and one of rose's friends mason who was in the first book as well who has like a huge crush on rose she kind of starts to date him too because she's like you know what whatever i've got with dimitri it's never gonna happen mason's like a great guy i'm gonna date him. towards the end of the book rose mason and another character called eddie and another character the bully from the first book she they all run away to fight the nearby evil vampires which is like the dumbest idea and even rose is like this is stupid she went after them to bring them back because she was like we're all gonna get killed like you guys don't understand how scary these evil vampires are because in the first book she fought a couple and she was like, you don't understand how scary and real and intense these evil vampires are. And all like the novices think that they can handle it because they've never faced one in real life. But Rose has faced one in real life. And she's like, no, bitch, it's scary. You don't want to face them. So she goes to bring them back. And she doesn't tell any of the like teachers or anything because she was the one that gave them the information about where the evil, evil vampires were because Dimitri told her. And she didn't want to break his trust by being like, yeah, I told some other people. So she's just trying to keep everything undercover by just bringing them back and acting like it never happened but while they're there they get they get captured by the evil vampires and she's like bitches i told you like we are not supposed to be here and look what happened anyway oh man it's pretty traumatic i love frostbite because a lot happens while they're captured i'm not going to say anything else i don't want to spoil it but it's a huge turning point for rose it's a huge turning point for rose and lissa as well like so much happens um so I, I've always loved this book. And also it's still like thin enough that I've read this in a day as well. So, okay. So it's been really hard to talk about these books without spoiling anything. Because what if you do want to read it? You know, I know it's like 10 years old, but I don't know. I don't want to ruin it for you guys and then say too much. But hopefully you were able to follow that. I know it was super disjointed because when I'm talking about it, I get so passionate and I get so excited and then I don't know what I'm talking about and then I lose my train of thought. So I hope you were able to follow that and get some sort of like understanding about the books. I am super excited to talk about the third and the fourth book in my next video because the third book, Shadow Kiss, that is my favorite. That's my favorite one of the whole series, I think. I also really... I do like, no, you know what? I'm just going to stick with it. It's my favorite. I love them all. So it's really hard to pick one. But I remember when I was in high school reading them, I always loved Shadow Kiss. So when I read it again this year, it was just like really special for me to be able to like read it again because I love it so much. Okay, I should probably wrap this up. I feel like I've rambled for far too long. If you're still here listening to me talk about these books, thank you so much. It means so much to me. Um, thank you to everyone who subscribed and messaged me. It means so much to me. It makes me smile so much every time I get a message that one of you guys has watched my videos. And thank you to everyone who's been commenting. I love you all. And thank you for watching. I can't wait to see you in my next one. I can't wait to talk about my next, the next, the next books. Ah. The next one's A Shadow Kiss and Blood Promise. So I'm really excited to talk about those. And I'll see you then. All right. Thanks. Bye.